Science Learning Gateway. I hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to start class 8 Social Science Geography chapter number 2, Lithosphere. Chapter number 1, I have already uploaded about Earth, our living planet. You can check that in the playlist of class 8 Geography. Today we are going to start this chapter number 2, Lithosphere. So before starting, you should know what is Lithosphere. First of all, you should know about the meaning of this word. What is lithosphere? Lithosphere is the outermost solid part of the earth. Lithos, lithos means rock. And the meaning of the lithosphere is the outermost solid layer of the earth. It is one of the layer of the earth which is solid and outermost. The outermost layer of the earth which is solid in structure is called lithosphere. And uh, generally what uh, what things we have in solid things like rocks so it is made up of rocks so lithos means rocks so it is the outermost layer of the earth okay which is made up of rocks so we'll start with our chapter before starting guys i have a small request from you all if you're really liking my tutorial and my work then please like it and share it with your friends also and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that whenever i will be uploading a new video you'll get the notification for that and if you're really liking this tutorial then please click on the like button also your comments and your uh, likes and all will motivate me to create more helpful content for you all so let's start with our chapter okay so the name of the chapter is lithosphere and what are the things which we have to read in this chapter meaning of lithosphere and it's important structure of earth and its composition structure of rocks about different types of rocks also we'll study in this chapter the internal forces like volcanoes earthquakes tsunamis and their effects on the life on the earth these are very destructive agents right volcanoes earthquakes and tsunamis so how these occur in the earth and how they use to destruct the life and property on the earth we will read about those things and about the ex external forces like the temperature, wind, rain and river. About these things also we will read and about the meaning of the underground water and its importance. About these things we will read in this chapter about these topics. So let's start with our chapter. First of all we should know the meaning and the importance of the earth. Right? So what is the meaning of lithosphere? What is lithosphere? So just now I told you the outermost solid layer of the earth is known as lithosphere. So you can mark this in your textbook. This is a definition of lithosphere. If one marks question will come, you have to write this definition. The outermost solid layer of the earth is called the lithosphere. Lithos means what? Rocks. So this layer of the earth will be made up of rocks. Right? This layer is very thick in the continents and quite thin under the sea floor. Means in the last chapter we have read about the continents. Continents are present on the land. They occupy the land areas. So this lithosphere layer will be very thick in the continent areas and in the sea floor it will be thin. The lithosphere consists of rocks, minerals, sol soils etc. So what are the things which are present in the lithosphere? Rocks are present, minerals are present and soils are present. And some of the other things will also be present. Okay, life exists on the uh, life on this layer with the help of atmosphere and that and the hydrosphere. So why life can exist on this uh, lithosphere? Why life can present on that on the lithosphere? Because of the presence of atmosphere and hydrosphere. Mm. Lithosphere, atmosphere and hydrosphere will help the life or the living things to exist on lithosphere, to be present on the lithosphere. Continents are part of the lithosphere. So what are the parts of the lithosphere? Continents will be the part. Oceans will be not the part of the lithosphere. Only continents will be the part of the lithosphere, the land areas. So what are the different landforms like mountains, are mountains, plateaus, plains etc are found so these things we can get in the lithosphere mountains plateaus and plains so this is all about your lithosphere the first thing that definition you should remember that it is the outermost solid layer of the earth and is known as lithosphere lithos means what lithos means rocks now now we'll read about earth's interior and composition means what are the things which are present inside the earth right it's very interesting to know that the planet in which we are living what are the interior what are the materials which are present inside the earth how it looks about those things we'll read in this one interior means inside the inside structure of the earth we'll read in this chapter interior and composition so our planet earth is more than 4.6 billion years old hmm? Since then, the planet Earth is there in this, in this world and still in the process of changing. From then, so many new new changes are done because of man and the scientists. Man, are, man uh, 
द साइंटिस्ट ऑलवेज ट्राई टू इन्वेंट न्यू न्यू थिंग्स इन द अर्थ राइट तो वट इज इन साइड द अर्थ इज स्टिल अ मिस्ट्री फॉर मैन बट नाउ और बट स्टिल ऑल्सो दे आर डिस्कवरिंग सो मेनी थिंग्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट डिस्कवरी ओनली वी केम टू नो अबाउट द अबाउट द अर्थ एंड इट स्ट्रक्चर विथ ईयर्स ऑफ स्टडी एंड रिसर्च ह्यूमन बींग्स हैव बीन एबल टू गेट इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द मटेरियल इन साइड द अर्थ अप टू टेन टू ट्वेल्व किलोमीटर्स तो ह्यूमन बींग्स बिकॉज ऑफ द रिसर्च बिकॉज ऑफ द साइंटिस्ट दे कैन दे कैन लुक एट द interior of the earth they can look inside the earth but what are the materials that are present inside the earth till 10 to 12 kilometers only but after 10 to 12 kilometers they cannot do the research why because the temperature below the earth the inside the earth is very very high in that temperature the research, the scientists cannot go work going beyond this temperature is very difficult due to increase of temperature after 10 to 12 kilometers what will happen the temperature will increase so it's not possible for the scientists to work on that temperature so it's very difficult till then so they have discovered till 10 to 12 kilometers only that what are the materials are present inside the earth to understand more about the earth interior humans are dependent on incident evidences such as seismic waves volcanic materials etc to know more about the earth many of the scientists they are dependent on these factors like seismic waves volcanic materials etc to understand the interior of the earth the earth interior comprises of various materials in different forms on the basis of density of material chemical composition and physical state of matter the earth interior is classified into three main layers now we have the most important thing that there are three main layers of the earth and they are known as crust mantle and the core so what are the three main layers of the earth crust mantle and core right so you have to remember the three main layers of the earth are known as crust mantle and core you can look in this diagram we have the three main layers of the earth the outermost layer is called the crust the middle layer is called the mantle and we have the core core is divided into two parts outer core and inner core inner core will be present at the last okay so we have three main layers of the earth crust mantle and core core will be of two types outer core and inner core outer means outside inner means it will be present inside the earth you can look at the diagram of the lithosphere also over there the thick crust it is a very thick layer of the earth okay this is your lithosphere this is a lithosphere and it is made up of crust and upper most solid mantle so what are the layers of the earth which is present in the lithosphere it will be made of crust and only upper most solid mantle okay since we have this is mantle this is your core this outer layer is called the crust the middle part is called the mantle and we have the core over there outer core and inner core right first of all we'll start our discussion from the crust crust is the first layer of the earth right mantle is the second and core is the third one the first one is our crust the crust is the uppermost layer of the earth rich in silica aluminum and magnesium so what are the what are the minerals which we can get in the crust these metals we can get in the crust silica aluminum and magnesium and it is the uppermost layer of the earth you have to remember this one crust is the uppermost layer of the earth and rich in which of the metals silica aluminum and magnesium the depth of this layer is around 60 km from the surface from the earth surface if we'll go inside the crust its depth will be 60 km only in the upper part of the crust only lighter metals are found okay so crust is also divided into two parts upper layer and the lower layer so in the upper layer of the crust only lighter metals materials are found it is called sail s a i l sail silica and aluminum what the full form of sail silica and aluminum so these metals can be materials can be found only on the up on the outer part of the crust silica and aluminum or continent or continental crust this crust is also known as the outer part of the crust is also known as sail or continental crust the lower part of the crust is rich in silica and magnesium okay and the lower part of the crust will be rich in which of the materials silica and magnesium and it is called sima s i m a s i for silica m a for magnesium and it is also known as oceanic crust so how many types of crust we have two types of crust continental crust and oceanic crust right continental crust and oceanic crust continental crust is also known as sail s a i l which of the materials are found in this layer silica and aluminum and oceanic layer is also known as sima which of the materials are found in this layer silica and magnesium so these things you have to remember about the crust crust is uppermost layer of the earth and which of the materials we can get in this uh, crust 
silica magnesium and aluminium the upper part of the crust in the upper part of the crust only lighter materials will be found and it is called sill silica and aluminium are also known as continental crust and the stick and the next layer of the crust that is the lower part of the crust is all is known as oceanic crust or sema because in this silica and magnesium we can get so these this is all about your crust next we have the mantle metal mantle is the middle layer of that you can see in this diagram also this this is part this part the uppermost part is called the crust the middle layer is called the mantle this one and this light and the downward layer is called the core so this is the one of the uh, this is the this in this the layers of earth are shown crust mantle and core crust will be the outermost mantle will be in the middle and core will be the innermost layer the mantle is the second and the middle layer of the earth you can inline this one the mantle is the second and the middle layer of the earth the depth of this layer is about 200 kilometers from the surface if from the surface will measure the measure the depth then it will be 2900 kilometers and the materials in the semi liquid or partially molten stain which is called magma and the materials which are found in this mental layer will be in the form of semi liquid not so liquid not so solid so it will be in the form of semi liquid or molten and that material is called magma okay magma will be present in the man in the mental state the mantle is composed of dense and rigid rocks which have predominance of minerals like magnesium and iron. Then what are the materials which are present in this mantle? It will be composed of dense and rigid rocks. Some of the rock particles are present in the mantle. And which of the minerals can, can we get in the mantle? Magnesium and iron we can get in this mantle layer in the inner in the middle part of the earth earth. The mantle has two parts. Now this mantle also has two parts. The first part is called upper mantle or the ethnosphere and is partially in a molten condition. And the second layer is called the lower mantle or the mesosphere in solid condition. So there are two parts or the two layer or or the two layers of mantle. First one is called upper mantle or also known as or, or also known as ethnosphere is partially in a molten condition. Means it will be in the form of molten condition only. And the lower mantle or it is also known as mesosphere in in solid condition that will be in the solid form first one will be in the molten form and second one will be in the solid form so you have to remember the names of the two parts of mental upper mental lower mental upper part is known as asthenosphere and the lower part is known as mesosphere the contact zone the contact zone of the crust and the mental is called moro moro vesic discontinuity Okay. Now, this is also one of the important lines. The contact zone of the crust and the mantle is called mono, mohorovic, mohorovisic discontinuity or moho. You can see over there one line is there. It divides the crust and the mantle. The contact zone uh, means uh, this crust and the mantle, they are meeting at this point. So, this is the co contact zone of crust and the mental it is called mohorovisic discontinuity or moho mohorovisic discontinuity or moho while the boundary now we have one more boundary which separates the mental from the core this is called gutenberg discontinuity okay this is called gutenberg discontinuity so this question can also come name the what is the name of the boundary which which separates crust from the mental you can write mohorovisic discontinuity or the boundary which separates the mental from the core is called gutenberg discontinuity so you can mark this in your textbook right Here the rocks are different in chemical composition from those below and above. The rocks which are present in the crust will be different from the mental, right? And the rocks which will be present in the mental will be different from the core. So that's why one boundary is there which divides the crust from the mental and which divides the mental from the core. Next we have the innermost layer of the earth that is known as the core. About crust we have read, about mental we have read and now we will read about the core. This is the innermost layer of the earth. You can mark this one. This is the innermost layer of the earth and the depth of this layer is 6371 kilometer from the earth, from the surface. From the earth's surface where we are standing or living. From there if you will measure the depth it will be 6371 kilometers. And what are the materials which we get in this core? The most important material core are nickel and ferrous. Ferrous is also one of the form of iron. Hmm? Iron is only known as ferrous. So nickel and iron will get in this core. So it is known as NIFE. NI. 
symbol of nickel is ni and symbol of iron is fe that's why ni fe they have written so the score is also known as ni fe the core is divided into two sublets now again the score will be divided into two parts the outer core and the inner core the outer core is known as molten core whereas the materials are where the materials are in liquid and in molten form and the inner core is known as the solid core so what are the two parts of core outer core and inner core outer core is known as molten core because most of the material are in the form of liquid molten means what liquid and the inner core is known as solid core because in this the materials will be in the form of solid so this was all about the layers of the earth crust mental and core now some facts are given in the in this box questions will not be asked in this from this one but for, for your knowledge you should know maybe your teacher will give question in your exam some deepest land mines in the world so three deepest mine land three deepest land mines are given over there the akola peninsula of russia is around 12 kilometers it is the deepest one then we have the kimberley diamond mine in south africa africa it is about around 3.9 kilometers and in india we have one gold mine at kgf in india is around 1.5 kilometers so these are the three deepest land mines in the world now we'll start with rocks so what are rocks right so rocks you all know what are rocks you all have seen the rocks right so what are rocks what is the definition of the rocks hmm. now we'll read about the rocks rocks are the solid inorganic substances that are found in the crust of the earth where do we get the rocks we get the rock in the crust of the earth these are solid inorganic substances inorganic means it these are made from the inorganic substances not from the living substances right these are solid rocks rocks are all always in the form of solid state solid inorganic substances that are found in the crust of the earth you can underline this one in your textbook they are aggregates of minerals means in the when minerals will combine together aggregates means what collection when minerals will combine together rocks will be formed and how rocks is formed what what is the name of the process by which rocks are rocks are formed it is formed by sorry soil is formed by weathering of rocks okay how we can get the soil soil is formed by the weathering of rocks weathering means breaking down of rock when rocks will be break broken down we will get the soil rocks are formed due, formed due to various natural processes so how the rocks will be formed because of the natural processes which are going on in our earth okay because of that rocks will be formed on the basis of mode of formation rocks are divided into three types hmm? how the rocks are formed on that process on the on the formation on the mode of formation of rocks rocks are divided into three types what are the three types of rocks igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks so how many types of rocks we have three types igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks right so you should remember the three types of rocks igneous metamorphic and sedimentary you can look at in the diagram this is a diagram for igneous rock this one is your sedimentary and this one is your metamorphic rocks one by one we'll read about all the three rocks and there we'll learn about their examples also that what are the examples of igneous rocks what are the example of sedimentary rocks and what are the examples of metamorphic rocks so first we'll start with our igneous rocks discussion okay what are igneous rocks the word igneous means fire derived from the latin word ignis or sanskrit word word agni so what is the meaning of this word igneous igneous means fire igneous rocks are those which have been formed by the cooling of molten matter of the earth and igneous rocks were the first to be formed therefore they are called primary rocks so how igneous rocks are formed first of all in the earth which rock was formed first of all igneous rocks are formed okay they are the first rocks to be formed so they are also known as primary rocks hmm? and how they are formed they are formed by the cooling of molten matter of the earth when the molten matter means the liquid matter when the molten matter of the earth cools when the cooling process will take place of the molten matter of the earth then only igneous rocks will be formed and they are also known as the primary rocks now we have the two important types of igneous rocks what are the two types of igneous rocks intrusive igneous rocks and extrusive igneous rocks again intrusive igneous rocks are of two types plutonic rocks and dike rocks you can remember this table so that you can easily remember this one igneous rocks are of two types intrusive and extrusive intrusive is again divided into two types plutonic rocks and dike rocks plutonic rocks what are the examples of plutonic rocks granite okay its structure will be crystalline structure and what is the example of dike rocks dolerite its structure will be semi crystalline now 
एक्सक्लूसिव ब्लॉक्स रावा लावा और वॉल्कैनिक रॉक दिस एक्सक्लूसिव रॉक इज ऑल्सो नोन एज लावा और वॉल्कैनिक रॉक्स एंड इट्स स्ट्रक्चर विल बी ग्लासी और सेंड्री एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एक्सक्लूसिव रॉक इज बसाल तो वॉट वी हैव रेड दैट देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ इग्नियस रॉक्स इंट्रूसिव एंड एक्सक्लूसिव इंट्रूसिव इज अगेन डिवाइड इंटू टू टाइप्स प्लूटोनिक रॉक्स एंड डाइक रॉक्स राइट इन प्लूटोनिक रॉक्स एग्जाम्पल इज ग्रेनाइट एंड डाइक रॉक्स एग्जाम्पल इज डॉलराइट एक्सक्लूसिव रॉक एग्जाम्पल इज बसाल टिल नाउ वॉट वी हैव रेड इग्नियस मीन्स फायर एंड इग्नियस रॉक्स आर फॉर्म बाई द कूलिंग ऑफ मोल्टन मैटर ऑफ द अर्थ एंड देर सिंस दे आर फॉर्म द फर्स्ट दे आर ऑल्सो नोन एज प्राइमरी रॉक्स एंड दे आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ इग्नियस रॉक्स इंट्रूसिव एंड एक्सक्लूसिव नाउ फर्स्ट विल रीड अबाउट इंट्रूसिव इग्नियस रॉक्स वेल द मोल्टन मटेरियल मैगमा ऑफ द अर्थ इंटीरियर डू नॉट रीच द अर्थ सर्फेस दे कूल एंड सॉलिडिफाई बिलो द सर्फेस आर कॉल लॉस ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी एंड कॉल इंट्रूसिव इग्नियस रॉक्स वट हैपन्स वेन द मैगमा मैगमा इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड द अर्थ वेन इट कैन नॉट कम आउटसाइड द अर्थ वेन इट विल नॉट कम आउटसाइड द अर्थ वॉट इट विल डू इट विल कूल एंड सॉलिडिफाई इन साइड द अर्थ ओनली एंड आफ्टर दैट दिस इंट्रूसिव इग्नियस रॉक्स विल बी फॉर्म इंट्रूसिव मीन्स इन साइड सो इन इन द इन साइड ओनली द this intrusive igneous rocks will be formed these rocks are made up of large crystals and found at great depth how they are made up of they are made up of large crystal and they are found below the earth surface inside the earth what are the examples of intrusive rocks granite diorite and gabbro at least two example you should remember for intru intrusive igneous rocks granite and gabbro you can remember granite and gabbro are ex easy both are starting from the alphabet g so you can remember granite and gabbro and how they are formed when the molten material that is called magma of the earth do not reach the earth surface cannot come out of the earth surface they cool and solidify below the below the surface and and are called loss of property and and are called loss of property and are called intrusive igneous rocks they are formed by the cooling and solidification of the earth's magma that time intrusive igneous rocks are formed example granite gabbro you can remember next we have extrusive igneous rocks rocks formed by the solidification of magma above the earth surface extrusive exterior means extrusive means outside so these will be formed by the solidification of magma above the earth surface it this process will take place above the earth surface and that intrusive that one has taken place inside the earth surface are called extrusive igneous rock in this also solidification of magma will be take place but it will take place outside the surface you can mark this one in your textbook these rocks are generally fine grained or glassy because lava after reaching the earth. the surface of the earth cools and it solidifies quickly so the, what, what will be the structure of these rocks they are grained in structure and glassy okay they means little uh, shining will shining structure they have glassy structure examples basalt and andesite andesite okay it, these two examples you can remember for extrusive igneous rock basalt and andesite at least one one also if you remember then also it's good for igni for intrusive igneous rock you can remember granite granite we used to generally place this granite in our kitchen slabs and all so you can remember like that and extrusive you can remember basalt now we'll read about the cycle of the rock how the rock cycle occurs or how the rocks, uh, how the rocks are formed first of all this magma it is the liquid part which is present inside that it cools and crystallizes cooling and crystallization process will occur means cool, cooling and solidification process will occur after that igneous rocks will be formed hmm? from the igneous rock metamorphic rocks are formed when the, when we will apply heat and pressure when the earth when the igneous rock will get heat and pressure from the earth these igneous rocks will be changed into metamorphic rock again metamorphic rock will melt and they will form magma right and after this one after that igneous rock when the process of erosion and deposition will take place these um, erosion mean small the igneous rock will break into small small pieces called sediments okay after that what will happen the sediment will compact and cementation means after that all the sediments will collect together and sedimentary rocks will be formed sedimentary rocks again they when heat and pressure will be applied on sedimentary rocks they will change into metamorphic rocks so these metamorphic rocks are formed by applying heat and pressure on sedimentary rocks also and igneous rocks also metamorphic rocks can again change into sediments it can also change it break into small small pieces by erosion and deposition process like igneous rocks will change into sediment like that only met metamorphic big rock will also change into sediment okay so this is your cycle of the rock means from the igneous rock we can make the sedimentary rocks means from the from the igneous rocks only sedimentary rocks are formed and metamorphic rocks are formed right and from the sedimentary rocks also metamorphic rocks are formed so this cycle goes on 
repeating itself so that different different types of rocks will be formed what is magma and lava the mati the rock material in the liquid or molten state is called magma magma is present inside the earth surface and it will be in the form of liquid or molten state and when it comes out from the earth is called lava when the magma will come out from the earth surface then at that time it is called lava right now we'll start our discussion with sedimentary rocks igneous rocks we have finished there are two types of igneous rocks intrusive and extrusive example of intrusive igneous rock is granite and example of extrusive igneous rock was basalt right so now we'll start with sedimentary rocks the word sedimentary is derived from a latin word sedimentum which means settling down so what is the meaning of sedimentary settling down the sediments will settle down sediments means small small pieces of the rocks the sediment rocks are formed by the agency of water of wind and ice so how the sedimentary rocks will be formed by the help of water wind and ice these agents break and erode the igneous rocks transport these fragments and deposit them at the certain places so what this uh, water wind and ice will do they will break the igneous rock into small small pieces and all the small pieces the sediments will be collected at a place the deposit of these materials often occur in the form of layers or strata therefore sedimentary rocks are called stratified rocks when the layers when the sediments will arrange themselves in the form of layers or strata that's why sedimentary rocks are sometimes also called as stratified rocks because they appear like layers if you look at the structure of the sedimentary rocks you can see the layers of the rocks are formed after the disintegration of igneous rock disintegration means breaking down of igneous rocks so how sedimentary rocks will be formed are formed by the disintegration of the igneous rocks therefore they are called secondary rocks so since they are form they are formed by the from the igneous rocks they are called sedimentary rocks we have read that igneous rocks are the first rocks so they are called primary rocks and from the igneous rocks only sedimentary rocks are formed so they are called secondary rocks these rocks are also called aqueous rocks because they are formed in the water bodies so what is the other name of sedimentary rocks aqueous aqueous means water so they are formed in the water bodies like lake sea or ocean bed so how sedimentary rocks are formed they are formed by the disintegration of igneous rock the igneous rock will break into small small pieces after that wind water and ice will take those pieces to certain place and the and the pieces will arrange themselves in the form of layer and after that sedimentary rocks will be formed and they are also known as secondary rocks or aqueous rocks now we have now we can look at the flow chart of the sedimentary rocks sedimentary rocks are of two types inorganic and organic inorganic means which are made from the chemicals from the chemical these chemical substance like rocks and etc and organic means they are made from the living organism right so inorganic and organic inorganic sedimentary rocks organic sedimentary rocks inorganic sedimentary rocks are of two types mechanically formed chemically formed right mechanically formed by mechanical agents chemically formed means they are formed by the chemicals so again this mechanical formed are divided into two types arenaceous rocks and argillaceous rocks example of arenaceous rocks is sandstone an example of argillaceous rocks is shale and chemically formed inorganic sedimentary rocks are rock salt and gypsum if we will talk about organic sedimentary rocks again we have two types calcareous and carbonaceous calcareous something like calcium right so example is limestone because the chemical name of this limestone is calcium carbonate calcareous means it will be made up of some that mineral called calcium and carbonaceous carbon so carbon is present in what coal so we have uh, we have the example as coal so what are the examples of sedimentary rocks you can write sandstone limestone coal rock stone gypsum any two or three examples you can remember for sedimentary rocks also first we'll start with mechanically formed sedimentary rocks one by one we'll discuss all the four types mechanically formed chemically formed calcareous and carbonaceous mechanically formed sedimentary rocks rocks build up by fragments of pre-existing rocks which have been produced by the pressures of weathering and erosion okay so how this mechanically sedimentary rocks will be formed they are formed formed by the fragments pieces of pre existing rocks pre existing rocks means the rocks which are already pre present in the nature the rocks which will be already present in the nature from these rocks only mechanically sedimentary rocks will be formed by the process of weathering and erosion weathering means breaking down erosion means carrying away 
erosion of soil erosion of top soil you have heard then rain water or wind can carry out this top layer of the soil that is called erosion of the soil by that process this mechanically sedimentary rocks will be formed example sandstone and shale sandstone is an example of arenaceous rocks and shale is an example of argillaceous rocks now we have chemically formed sedimentary rocks chemical sediments are commonly formed by the process of evaporation of water containing salts in solution what happen when the sea water is present that time evaporation of water can take place because of the sunlight evaporation of water can be take place because of that chemically said chemically formed sedimentary rocks can be formed example rock salt and gypsum okay next we have organically formed sediment these are inorganically formed types now we'll discuss about the organically formed sedimentary rocks in this also we have two types calcareous and carbonaceous organic sediments are those derived by the accumulation of remains of organism accumulation of remains of organisms means when the dead plants and animals will die their bodies will be accumulated collected in a place by that from those accumulated parts only organically organically sedimentary rocks will be formed such as shells of marine organism remains of plants and animals example when the when the marine animals which are living in the seas and all when they will die their shells will be there in the sea or the lake from that also rocks will be formed okay and when the plants and animals will die their body will also be deposited on the land their bodies will be collected accumulated from their bodies also rocks can be formed example limestone calcareous rocks it is a type of calcareous rocks and coal it is formed by the dead remains of plants and animals right so it is it is also called carbonaceous rocks okay limestone is formed by the shell of marine because they contain that calcium mineral calcareous rocks so these are the examples of your organically formed sedimentary rocks so what are the examples of sedimentary rocks you can write limestone sandstone coal gypsum rock salt two or three example two example is enough set limestone and sandstone is easy coal is also easy you can remember two three examples next we have metamorphic rocks metamorphic rocks is the third type of rock we have already discussed igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks the third type is metamorphic rock metamorphic rocks are those which are formed by the process of metamorphism or alteration of pre existing which are formed by the process of metamorphism or alteration of pre existing rock metamorphism means or alteration means changes if the pre existing pre existing rocks are the rocks which are already present in that was well in if in those rocks some changes will occur then metamorphic rocks will be formed as we have seen in the cycle of this rocks that metamorphic rocks can be formed from sedimentary rocks also and igneous rocks also when some heat and pressure will be applied on the igneous rocks some changes will occur in the in both the rocks then we can get the metamorphic rocks so it will be formed because by the process of metamorphism metamorphic metamorphism of pre existing rocks metamorphic means change of form which may be physical or chemical or both by influence of heat and pressure so whenever some changes will occur by heat and pressure that time metamorphic rocks will be formed metamorphism means change okay you have to remember examples of metamorphic rocks now we'll read about the examples of metamorphic rocks granite basalt limestone sandstone coal graphite okay so granite is you can uh, call it genus basalt cyst limestone is an example of marble sandstone quartzite coal graphite it is a, these are the forms of these uh, this type of stones coal one of the form of coal is graphite other form graphite diamond metamorphic rocks are the hardest rock of the earth okay this point also you should remember that metamorphic rocks are the hardest rocks on the earth these rocks supply precious stones what are the stones which we get from the from the metamorphic rocks sapphire ruby emerald and diamond these these stones are used for making the rings and the jewelries if you we'll go to any jewelry shop you can see this gem stones these are called gem stones sapphire ruby emerald and diamonds these are used for making the jewelries rings etc okay so these rocks are very precious stone means they are very costly this all the stones these are very costly in the market okay so you can remember the examples of this one sapphire ruby emerald diamond these are the examples of metamorphic rocks right and these are the examples of your that uh, sorry these are the examples of uh, sedimentary rock these examples we have read in sedimentary rocks granite basalt limestone sandstone coal graphite these are examples of sedimentary rocks 
if some changes will occur in the granite rocks then we can get genes this is a type of metamorphic rocks if some changes will occur in the basalt then we can get cyst if some changes will occur in the limestone then we'll get marble marble is an example of metamorphic rock if some changes will occur in the graphite structure then diamond we will get diamond is an example of metamorphic rocks if some changes will occur in the coal we'll get graphite graphite is an example of your metamorphic sandstone if some example will will have then we'll get quartzite it is also an example of metamorphic rocks so in this uh, tutorial i will uh, teach you till here only rest of the topics i will cover in the next video about uh, forces of the earth crust those things earthquakes volcanoes tsunamis and uh, you are about external forces internal forces glaciers underground water and those topics will cover in the next part of this video so this will be your part one of this chapter lithosphere in the part two of this video i will cover the rest of the topics till now i hope you all have understood and once you go through your textbook also give a reading to your textbook if you have any doubt you can comment in the comment section i will try to clear your doubt so today we will do we uh, today will study till here only forces of the earth crust will start we will do in the next video of this chapter that is in the part two once you can look at the uh, diagram of this rock cycle first of all you can see magma is there magma is a molten form of the rock if the magma will solidify and it will cool then it will form igneous rock igneous rock will break down into small pieces sediments will be formed this sediments will be carried out to one place and after that sedimentary rocks will be formed from the sedimentary rocks metamorphic rocks can be formed and metamorphic rocks can also be formed from the igneous rocks now these are the diagrams of different types of sedimentary rocks sandstone limestone gypsum conglomerate and shale so these are the diagrams of different types of this you can see the coal this is also one of the type of your sedimentary rocks i hope you all have understood please give a reading to your textbook and after that uh, if you have any doubt then comment in the comment section i will try to clear your doubt thank you for watching my channel science learning gateway and uh, if you like this tutorial then please click on the like button and share it with your friends also and if you are new to my channel please subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that whenever i will be uploading a new video you will get the notification for that so i will upload the uh, rest I will cover the rest topics of this chapter that it forces external and internal forces underground water and all in the second part of this video. So this will be your part one of lithosphere. In the part two you will get the complete chapter. Rest of the topics you will get in that. So keep watching my channel. Thank you for watching my channel.